because we have been brought up to identify ourselves with the spotlight consciousness and the floodlight consciousness is undervalued we have the sensation of ourselves as being just the spotlight just the ego that looks and attends to this and that and the other and so we ignore and are unaware of the vast vast extent of our being people who by various methods become fully aware of their floodlight consciousness have what is called a mystical experience or a cosmic consciousness or what the Buddhists call Bodhi, awakening. The Hindus call Moksha, liberation. Because they discover that the real deep, deep self, that which you really are fundamentally and forever, is the whole of being. All that there is, the works that's you only that universal self that is you has the capacity to focus itself at ever so many different here and nows so when you use the word I this as William James said is really a word of position like this or here Just as a sun or star has many rays, so the whole cosmos expresses itself in you, in you, in you, in you, in you, with all the different variations. It plays games. It plays the John Doe game, the Mary Smith game. It plays the beetle game, the butterfly game, the bird game, the pigeon game, the fish game, the star game. Just like uh, these are games that differ from each other, just like backgammon, whist, bridge, uh, poker, pinochle, or like waltz, mazurka, uh, minuet, and so on. It dances with infinite variety. But every single dance that it does, that is to say, you, is what the whole thing is doing. But you see, we forget it. We don't know. We, we, we've been brought up in a special way so that we are unaware of the connection. Unaware that each one of us is the, is the works. Playing it this way for a while and so we have been taught to dread death as if that were the end of the show it won't happen anymore and therefore to be afraid of all the things that might bring about death pain sickness suffering and if you don't know you see if you're not really vividly aware of the fact that you are basically the works, you have no real joy in life. You're just a bundle of anxiety mixed up with guilt. Because, you see, when we bring children into the world, we play awful games with them. Instead of saying, how do you do? Welcome to the human race. Now, my dear, we are playing some very complicated games. And these are the rules of the game we're playing. I want you to understand them, and then you learn them, and then when you get a little bit older, you may be able to think up some better rules. Instead of being quite direct with our children, instead we say, you're here on probation, you understand that? And maybe when you grow up a bit, you'll be acceptable. But until then, you should be seen and not heard. You're... Uh, you're a mess <laughs> and you've got to be educated and schooled and whipped until you're human. 
so that these attitudes which are inculcated uh, into us in infancy go on into old age. The way you start out is liable to be the way you finish. So people going around fundamentally feeling that they don't belong because their parents said to them in the first place, look, you don't really belong here. You're here on sufferance. You're on probation. You're not a human being yet. And people feel this right on into old age. And so they figure that the universe is presided over by this awful kind of God the Father parent, who, yes, has our best interest at heart, is loving, but who spares the rod spoils the child. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. <coughs> So everybody said it. All right, so I'm up early in the morning on a Sunday, and now it's time for church, meaning I'm up earlier than what most people are for church. My point being is I'm running on like maybe eight hours, nine hours of sleep in the past three days, and this is a sacrifice I'm willing to make for others, all right, selflessly, to do basically what... Alan Watts, which is the person you were just listening to, um, to do as he just explained, uh, that it, sh it should be that way in the sense that you should direct a child properly by providing the proper environment for the child to actually learn and adapt and overcome, not just control it, control it, control it, control it. You're a child, you're a child, you're a baby, you're a baby, whatnot. You know, they should be humans, little humans. Let them evolve. Provide the environment properly, not control them. Anyhow, my point being is I'm about to go do this Temple Builders Guide uh, Warriors Warrior Spirit Boost. All right, over here in Corona del Mar, this beautiful, beautiful scenery where there's going to be meditation. We're going to be playing around, literally playing around, uh, up and down uh, rocks and uh, coral that's there um, and climbing it and stuff like that. Um, doing a little bit of martial art type of high intensity workouts, little bursts in there, what some people call hit high intensity uh, uh, training. Uh, anyhow. It's all for free. And I'm only running on eight to nine hours on three hours of sleep because I do this type of stuff quite often. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying this to hopefully awaken people because that's what I'm going to do now. That's my, my goal is to empower people. Okay, provide the information that has been withheld from them all these years. I've had people that are 30-some, 60-some that are a German out of all people. As, what was this? He was like 65. He used to come to one of my, my gatherings. Um, and he always used to wonder, why? Why are you always trying? You know, it sounds condescending that you're always reminding us to breathe. Breathe. Is that something so natural? And he would do that for several weeks. And then one day... One day he just decided to, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to breathe every single time he reminds me. And lo and behold, at the end of the class, he was so amazed. He waited till everybody left. Right? And this is German, right? huge, tall guy, you know, wise man. You can tell he was, you know, past his 60s. Very, very uh, gentle, you know, humble, warm type of gentleman. All right? Anyways. He came up to me, he's like, Jesus, you were right. It's weird, I can't believe it. It's, 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 it's weird, I, I, I took a breath every single time you told me, and like I was full of energy, is what he told me. Because I couldn't believe it. Before I was always, you know, exhausted, stuff like that, but this time, I followed your lead to the point, to the dot, and I couldn't believe it. I'm like really happy right now. And I was like, what? I, I, I was like, wow, yeah, that, that's that's the power of... Simple breathing, something that we, we take for granted. Right? I don't take for granted a single breath. Uh, I've been so close to death so many times and came out without a single scratch. And I am thankful for that. I am grateful for that. And now I'm trying to pay it forward, trying to spread that love, that light that God gave me. And yes, I literally, like they say, I, I actually went to the light. Uh, well, the light was there. I wanted to go into the light and I didn't. 
several times. I said, you know what? No, my 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 brothers, my brothers in arms need me right now. There was a few times when I was in Iraq when I was blown up. Um, anyhow. Don't ever take anything for granted. Not even the simplest thing that we do automatically. Say, for instance, like breathing, right? Don't forget we detoxify about 70% of our to uh, toxins come out just through breathing alone. Um, so empower yourself. You need to wake up. And what, what the way I can put it, waking up is, and I have several friends, family, acquaintances, stuff like that that are like this and that have been like this for over five years, 10 years, whatever the case may be, some their whole entire life. But obviously after a certain point, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't count. It doesn't matter because they are only children. It's not expected from them. They still don't understand these concepts. But the point being is that when someone is asleep, not awakened, even if they're up and awake with their eyes open, consciously picking up things, when that person is still considered to be asleep, it's when vast information, not vast, but profound information, all right, you know, philosophical type, if you want to put it that way, spiritual type, all right, a holistic type, all right, that has to do a, a little bit above and beyond of what religion and Bible says that God says, fear God, fear God, all right, he's watching you. That's ridiculous. Why would you want to fear God? All loving God, you know, He forgives all. He does not want to separate us like all these other Bibles say. Bibles, you know, all these other religions say, right? I am a very religious person. I believe in God. But those installations, those organizations are keeping you extremely limited. Sorry to wake you up. But the point is, is when this, uh, uh, when this type of information, like I just mentioned right now, some of you already did it already, all right? Your ears to shut off. Oh, no, nope. That's that, nope. I better not listen to that because I need, I, I need to fear God like they tell me to, all right? Those are the people that are asleep. The ones that somehow just, with, even if they know it or not, even if they're doing it consciously or not, meaning ignoring that information that's coming because, oh, it's too much information. Adam and Eve were condemned because they, they took the apple from the knowledge tree. Are you kidding me? Like, that was a lie they put in the Bible. Yes, in the Bible. To keep you limited. It was done by kings, all right? There's many books, many uh, scrolls, if you want to put it that way, many stories, many uh, uh, of prophets and stuff like that. Why do you think Jesus' life from 33 and below, it's nowhere to be found in the Bible. Why? Because that's the time when he was doing his studies. Believe it or not, in Egypt, all right, with the esoteric uh, uh, teachers, all right, uh, um, uh, in India and all these other places. But they didn't want you to know that because then you might do that as well. Why do you think that where Jesus grew up in, whenever he went there, and this is in the Bible still, when he went to where he grew up, he couldn't do any miracle. Why? Because everybody knew him as the cute little Jesus. Or when he was growing up, he was the carpenter. He's a normal guy. There's no way he can do miracles. So in other words, they didn't believe that he could make miracles. Therefore, Jesus Christ couldn't make any miracles there. It's all about belief. Everybody everywhere else, he could do all these miracles. And I believe some of them, even the far-fetched ones. But guess what? He was trying to spread, not, it, not only him, but all, uh, uh, all these other prophets, all right, uh, from all these other uh, uh, um, um, uh, um, religions and stuff like that, uh, beliefs and stuff. All of them, all of them knew that we were made in the likeness of him, meaning the likeness of God, of source, of all, almighty, all powerful, the all, all right, um, and they knew they did not want us to follow them, right? Pay attention. Don't get lost just because I said that. They didn't want us to follow them. They wanted us to realize that we are like them. Okay? Our Christ ourselves. We are God's ourselves. We have so much power. We have so many levels to rise up above the religious one. 
above the ones where they put us. We are stuck in like level three. Technically, spiritually, uh, 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 understanding spiritual 